Good afternoon and welcome to Biztex Ambassador Conversation Show. Now today our conversation is with the German Ambassador to Malaysia, His Excellency Dr. Peter Blumeyer. Now, Ambassador, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, Ambassador, you are relatively newly appointed to Malaysia. You were appointed last year and you've served in some very interesting countries ranging from Kosovo to, to Congo to uh, Uganda. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, yes, I studied um, law and history in university. And um, then I decided to um, enter the foreign service. And uh, first they sent me uh, to Japan. That's where I started my uh, career in the economic uh, department uh, back in the 90s. And uh, as you said, I had uh, different postings in different parts of the world. Uh, one um, was in Kosovo, as you said, before I had been in Albania. That was at the time uh, when the Kosovo war raged. Uh, I was in Saudi Arabia and in Africa. I had postings in uh, Uganda and in Congo. And my last posting uh, was in Siberia and Russia. So and now I'm, I'm here. You see, I'm, um, I'm someone who's being tried out by the Foreign Office in various parts. Maybe they want to test uh, my ability uh, to withstand uh, different climate conditions. <laughs> uh, <to> now <laughs> I, um, I'm very happy to be, to be here to, um, uh, to withstand uh, the tropical climate in Malaysia. Well, I think it'd be a lot more pleasant than Siberia for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Malaysia actually is a very popular posting in, uh, in our service, and uh, I, was, I was very glad that uh, I was chosen for this. I'm, I'm glad you've, you've settled down. I hope your family has settled down as well. Well, Yes, yes. Now, could we start then, uh, uh, Your Excellency, by giving us an overview for, for uh, uh, the German economy today, your key sectors and your key engines of growth? Yes, uh, Germany, uh, as uh, well, most other countries in the world uh, has also been hit by the pandemic. Uh, we had a recession last year. Economy went down by 4.9%. Uh, in in uh, following certain waves, the waves of the pandemic. So we had a steep decline in the second quarter, then coming up in the third quarter. Then the second wave of the pandemic reached us, uh, so uh, economy went down again. Uh, and um, uh, this year, this, this continued actually. There was a decline of 1.8% uh, in the first uh, quarter 2021. And um, uh, then the third wave um, came and uh, it, this one did not hit us too much because then already our vaccination program helped us to come out of it. So uh, since a few months, uh, there is uh, optimism um, that uh, we, we will overcome the pandemic. Uh, only the last two weeks, um, there, was, uh, there were some clouds on the horizon again, uh, because uh, the Delta variant uh, hit Germany. 99% of our cases now uh, are uh, coming from the Delta uh, variant. Mm -hmm. uh, but since so many people are already uh, vaccinated, um, uh, we hope that, uh, that this uh, wave will be rather flat. Um, the companies actually have um, coped quite well uh, with the pandemic. Um, there has been support uh, from the state, uh, considerable support. Um, and uh, even the state uh, deficit came back to us. Uh, we had uh, no state deficit for almost 10 years, and now we had the, the second biggest one last year um, uh, since a German reunification. I think it was 4.2% uh, uh, deficit then. Uh, but it was needed to, to help companies, and, and they came out well. Also because um, uh, we have a lot of uh, small and medium-sized companies uh, which are quite resilient uh, to, to crises. Now, um, Your Excellency, I, I checked the numbers. We are very fortunate that earlier this afternoon, the, the Eurozone PMI numbers or Purchasing Manager Index numbers were out. And um, in fact, for Germany, it's very, very healthy. Uh, it's, uh, it was 62.4 in July. And last month, while well, it falls slightly, it's still a very healthy 60.6. So essentially, that's basically uh, tells the story of German manufacturers having confidence moving forward. 
Uh, yes, uh, they, they do have uh, confidence uh, that we overcome the pandemic now. Um, there are some obstacles, of course, um, uh, just uh, to name a few. Um, uh, we, we have a, a, a semiconductor shortage, which has hit the uh, automotive industry. We, we still have a severe container uh, shortage. Uh, but um, uh, actually, um, the, the German companies uh, look um, uh, optimistically into the uh, future, and uh, we, we think that um, we can restart our economy now. Now, let's zoom in back on uh, Malaysia and uh, the balance of trade, because Malaysia is, uh, Germany is Malaysia's largest foreign investor from the U European Union. So in terms of numbers, I think uh, the numbers from MIDA that I've got as of January, it's uh, June 2020 numbers, which uh, we got from MIDA earlier this year. It's uh, 461 manufacturing projects with German participation, total investment, uh, 33 billion ringgit, and projects have about 47,277. So Germany is a huge contributor in terms of investment. But is the, the, the trade balance on, on uh, Germany's side or is it on, on Malaysia's side? Uh, it's on the Malaysian side, actually. Uh, yes, you can be proud of uh, yourselves here uh, because you are one of the few countries uh, uh, which uh, have a, a positive trade balance uh, with Germany. And uh, this uh, has been uh, dramatically increased, actually, by, by the crisis. And this year, the numbers I have is uh, that uh, uh, Malaysia could, um, uh, could boost her exports to Germany by 25%, uh, whilst uh, Germany also could uh, make up for a little ground, uh, but uh, was only 2%. So um, uh, all in all, I think um, uh, Malaysia is doing quite well with Germany. So where is that growth coming uh, from? Because 25% is very significant. Is that coming from new sectors or is that from a low baseline effect because of COVID? I think, I think much as though to COVID, uh, there is a, a stark rise in imports of, uh, of gloves, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and also uh, semiconductors are uh, very much uh, in demand now. Um, so, uh, but uh, I guess uh, we, will, we will have to wait uh, for a year or so to see uh, how much of this will, uh, will be permanent and how this will uh, stabilize. All right, could you give us a, a sense of who the big German investors are in Malaysia and also then explain that very unique German SME metal stand uh, culture? Yes, uh, thank you for this opportunity. I voluntarily do this. Yeah, what, uh, what uh, most uh, people are not really aware of is um, uh, the uh, the broad lineup of the German economy. Um, uh, everybody knows our big companies, especially the car companies, uh, BMW, Mercedes, uh, uh, Volkswagen, and, and, and others. Uh, also, um, our uh, Siemens or uh, Bosch, uh, um, they are all here in Malaysia, by the way, too. Yeah. SAP um, and, and uh, B. Brown, um, uh, Infineon. Um, the, uh, everybody knows them, uh, but uh, actually um, the backbone of the German economy are our small and medium-sized uh, enterprises. Um, they, uh, they cover a wide range of production. Uh, they are the biggest employer in Germany. They greatly contribute to GNP and uh, also uh, to Texas uh, in Germany. And uh, we, we like to say they are our backbone. They are the backbone of, uh, um, uh, of the German economy. And uh, they are also the motors of um, uh, engine. Um, let me give you just a very prominent example for this. Uh, now, um, in Germany, we are quite proud of one company which, um, which has uh, produced um, one of the first um, uh, vaccines against COVID, um, uh -huh. BioNTech. Uh, which, oh, uh, yes. which uh, is uh, coupled to Pfizer now. And it was, it was a German company who has developed this uh, vaccine. And, um, uh, but what is also interesting is that uh, this company alone now stands for about half a percentage of growth of uh, our GNP now, because it is, it is just uh, skyrocketing. That's staggering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's exciting. And uh, I think that uh, also demonstrates uh, the strength of, um, uh, of our SME sector. 
Now, uh, Your Excellency, with uh, German businesses operating in Malaysia, German businesses generally tend to be very long-term investors. Uh, but what are the challenges that are faced by German businesses in Malaysia today? Well, um, I think before we come to the challenges, uh, we have to ask for the reasons why they are here, first of all. Uh, okay. um, yeah, and, and uh, uh, I think that uh, Malaysia is really for German companies. We have more than 700 companies here. So, so this, is, this is a large number and many of them are here since decades. Uh, so, so first we need to ask why, why are they here? And uh, I think there are some, uh, some um, great advantages um, of the location. Uh, Malaysia is uh, central in uh, Southeast Asia and um, is, uh, has excellent uh, opportunities uh, to serve uh, countries in the region from, from here. Um, so it uh, serves as regional hubs for, German, uh, for many German companies. Um, it has um, a well-skilled workforce uh, in good command of the English language, which is important for, uh, for German companies. Um, there's a good infrastructure with ports, airports, uh, railroads, roads, also internet. Uh, so this is another advantage. Uh, and uh, there is also, um, for a long time, there was political stability, mm -hmm. main factor for companies. And uh, there is a, a very forthcoming um, business climate. Uh, both politicians and administration um, welcome business and are helpful. I think all these, these factors, they uh, speak for um, Malaysia. Now, uh, coming, coming back to your question, what, what are the uh, challenges now? Uh, we, we need to see that we are at a crossroads now after the pandemic. Um, uh, the pandemic, um, uh, also the, the global situation, the relation between China and the US, uh, they, these, these factors, um, they um, make companies ask uh, where to go to, where to open uh, regional hubs where to increase uh, investments um, and uh, also uh, how, how they, they take an influence on um, uh, how to put up uh, new chip, uh, supply chains, which, uh, which is now uh, necessary. And uh, I think that uh, Malaysia, as also the neighboring countries, uh, uh, needs to prepare for this because it is a, a time of decision making uh, for companies. Um, we uh, have seen a state of emergency in the past, uh, a quick change of governments, uh, and I think uh, now um, what, what is also needed is uh, that um, uh, Malaysia will reconfirm its reputation of being uh, political stable. This will come with time. I think confidence is, is still there, but it, uh, it is a factor which um, one, one should have uh, in, in, um, in view. Um, also, it is necessary to overcome uh, the pandemic. Malaysia is on a good way there with, uh, with a strong vaccination program, which is um, uh, starting to show uh, effects. And, um, uh, and the, uh, the economy needs to um, uh, rekindle. So uh, this is also what, uh, what companies uh, look on. Uh, there are other factors which uh, are also important. Um, I might mention um, that some confidence into the administrative system is needed. The fight against corruption uh, must be strengthened. Um, there's also uh, the problem uh, for our companies that they want to participate at uh, government tenders. And they have, some of them have the feeling that there is not really a level playing field, that um, there are lots of um, uh, of government linked companies who always get uh, uh, get the contracts and uh, this is but this is something which uh, they are also interested in and and they look uh, they look at this Bumi putra politics uh, are are mm -hmm. also um, uh, a factor so uh, i think there um, there is quite um, quite some um, uh, need for progress uh, also for reforms um, but still, uh, I can tell you, I sense from the feedback of our companies here in, in the country uh, that they uh, still believe in, in the positive uh, business environment of Malaysia. Uh, there's a strong number of uh, companies who is, uh, which, which uh, is demonstrating this uh, effect. And uh, uh, of course, they do hope uh, 
that they will be able to continue here. Now, you know, uh, um, Ambassador, one of the key things is that characterize German in investors, as you've mentioned, you've pointed out, German investors are long-term investors. They've been here for decades. However, one of the things that perhaps from a Malaysian side, if I, as part of the research, talk to different people is the fact that perhaps, yes, we, you've invested in making things or, or setting up manufacturing plants, but unlike some other investors, and I use Intel as a very good example of people who have set moved R&D facilities from places like China and set up R&D facilities in Malaysia. So we move up the value chain. For the German companies, the advantage actually is we're really a very low cost base even to do R&D, not just for manufacturing. We've got a very highly skilled, not just a workforce, but a technical workforce, which are all trained in Penang. So basically the pool is there. Um, but if, if there is a criticism of German companies, perhaps you're not doing enough. Well, uh, companies um, do not um, receive directives from <laughs> the government, <laughs> not even from the ambassador, I'm afraid. So uh, I think they do what they, uh, what they believe is best for their company. And uh, I must say uh, it was uh, German companies who have uh, uh, contributed to building up Penang. We still have uh, big German companies uh, operating there. Think yeah, like of, Bibron uh, is a good example. Yeah. And, uh, and I, have, I have visited them, I have uh, visited in, in Finian there, we have a German business council there, um, a group of uh, German business people who exchange regularly among each other. And um, uh, I, what, what I can sense is uh, that they, they are quite confident. Um, uh, of course, there are, uh, there are some um, misgivings also. Um, uh, during the pandemic, there has been a flood of ever-changing regulations they had to cope with. I think um, they, they were not too happy with this. Um, and uh, this, this hasn't stopped yet, by the way. Um, but uh, but uh, generally speaking, I must say there is, um, there is uh, the, the will to, um, uh, um, to stay here uh, and also to expand. Uh, there's also the will to, um, uh, to invest Several German companies, big companies also, but also medium-sized companies, have told me that um, that they are willing to uh, invest and expand here. Uh, maybe they are just waiting until um, the uh, pandemic allows them to uh, to go ahead. Uh, but uh, my my impression is uh, that there uh, is a continuous an interest in uh, the location Malaysia. And, and uh, Your Excellency, I think you mentioned earlier in this interview of, of what I think is a very big opportunity because of geopolitical reasons, the relocation of supply chains is a big opportunity for Malaysia. What yes. do we need to be doing in order to engage German investors better to steal that business and channel that to Malaysia? Because we are a great entry point for ASEAN as a headquarters, you know, as a manufacturing base, as an R&D base. What do we need to do? Well, we, we have touched upon several points already. Uh, I think that um, now, uh, well, we, we need for, uh, uh, for the new government to come into place and, and uh, to, to take over. Maybe much will be uh, of the same, but then they will have to tackle the, uh, the workload, which, uh, which is ahead of them. Um, uh, concerning, for instance, overcoming the, um, uh, the pandemic, that is very important. Uh, now, many companies, uh, they feel hampered by uh, all the, the regulations. There have been a lot of um, uh, shutdowns in uh, this uh, country. Uh, understandable, of course, uh, you, you, you need to fight the pandemic. And uh, only if uh, when you will have overcome the pandemic, uh, then it will be, be uh, safe to uh, to live and to work together uh, again, um, so so we do have understanding for that. But that is uh, that is, I think, a, a great task lying ahead of uh, Malaysia, uh, so that they they feel free to um, uh, to operate again. German companies have hubs here, and um, uh, uh, they have installed hubs here, uh, but they cannot serve their customers in uh, in the surrounding countries. 
so I think this um, uh, this needs to be loosened. This is also not only dependent on Malaysia. That is clear. That's also dependent on the uh, immigration uh, regulations of these these other countries. Uh, but but it is important that um, uh, uh, that they uh, will not be hindered to uh, to operate from here. This this is one thing. The other thing is that they must get the confidence that they can. Um, uh, go ahead with their um, uh, with their operations on the ground. Uh, you mentioned the investments um, uh, of uh, German uh, companies here. Um, I have had uh, um, slightly different figures than you, but uh, let's uh, let's agree on that. It is uh, 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 quite substantial, uh, and um, uh, they, they are um, uh, now there are about fifty thousand people uh, who work for German companies in this uh, uh, country. And uh, some of them had to go out of work because of the uh, pandemic. I think that, that there is a um, uh, necessity, uh, uh, necessity that um, they, they can uh, um, have the confidence uh, that continuous operations will be possible again. This is, I think, the most urgent uh, need for our companies uh, at, the, at the moment. There's another need uh, to uh, facilitate the entry of experts. Um, uh, and um, uh, but I might also say that um, we have seen already a lot being done for this. Uh, there has been a one-stop shop um, center um, installed at uh, Maida for companies. Uh, now there is also the um, the possibility uh, via PICAS to vaccinate uh, uh, your workers so that um, uh, once once you have vaccinated 80%, they can uh, come back to work. So so I think that also uh, Malaysian uh, politicians are aware of this necessity. All this uh, needs now to come into gear, and then I, I'm uh, quite confident um, uh, that uh, not only the companies already present on the ground uh, will continue here and continue to work and to invest and to employ and to teach and to transfer know-how all the, they do all this uh, but that also um, new investors from germany can be attracted now let's move on to diplomatic uh, relations between our two countries how has the fact that we've had four prime ministers four governments essentially in the last four years and the current political fluidity impacted long-term relationship building and decision making? Well, um, I think that um, the fact that you had changing governments now um, uh, uh, reflects um, the viability of uh, Malaysian democracy. Uh, <laughs> change change is uh, not bad in a democracy. <laughs> Maybe this was a little bit too much change. I yes, do not perhaps. Uh, uh, but um, this is up to uh, the voter, uh, latest in uh, 2023. Uh, but uh, I think that um, uh, we, we should start to consider it normal if there is a, ch a political change once in a while. We will have a change in Germany now. We will have elections in September. Yeah, and September 26. How, what should we expect in terms of uh, uh, impacts on NATO, impacts on Asia, uh, Your Excellency. I know that you, you have uh, limitations in terms of what you can comment as a civil servant, but what are your thoughts in terms of how it will impact yeah. us here in Asia? Yeah, um, first, uh, to answer your, your first question, <laughs> still, I wanted to say uh, we have had uh, political consultations uh, with, um, uh, with Malaysia. Uh, I think it was end of May uh, with a wide range of uh, topics. And um, I think there is uh, under under the ground um, there, there is uh, quite some continuity between uh, between the governments. Uh, also, the functioning administration is looking uh, for this. This is the case in Malaysia, and this is the case in in, in Germany as well. As for Germany, yes, uh, it's a, a major election um, because for the first time ever in German history, ever since World War II. Um, uh, a standing chancellor will not candidate again. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Merkel will not run for office uh, again. She has been an institution for us. Uh, she was uh, our chancellor for 16 years. And now um, on her own, she says, now it's enough, someone else shall take over. And uh, this makes it quite exciting because no one goes into um, the competition um, uh, with uh, the reputation of having been uh, chancellor uh, before. 
And uh, we have um, three parties uh, of, a, let's say, a medium size, um, the Christian Democrats, the Social Democrats, and uh, the Greens. They, they are the ecological uh, party. And um, uh, none of them has uh, enough, um, according to forecasts, uh, uh, enough support that they would be able to rule alone, uh, not even with uh, one other coalition partner, uh, oh. but uh, we, are heading, we are heading for a coalition of at least three partners. So um, these three and the liberals uh, who have, have about uh, half of uh, the support um, in, in terms of uh, uh, voters as uh, these other three, uh, they will make up um, uh, the new government. We don't know in what constellation. This is very fluid in Germany. It uh, will depend uh, on the outcome of elections, also on the, uh, the ability of politicians then uh, to, uh, to find an agreement. Um, but we can say one thing. We also have two other parties which might enter. It's a far uh, a, a party on the far right wing and on the far left wing, uh, but uh, they are both not con considered um, uh, capable of uh, cooperating in, in, uh, in, in the government. So it will be these four uh, parties and, and they have, uh, in uh, terms of foreign policy, that was your question, uh, mm -hmm. they have common ground. Um, uh, there is um, an agreement uh, between, a broad agreement uh, between the democratic um, uh, parties in Germany on, um, uh, on the anchors of uh, foreign policy. Um, one, one, for instance, is the commitment to the United Nations. This in, implies respect for the universal human rights, uh, democracy, uh, rule of law, um, and, and uh, multilateralism, uh, and uh, support of uh, peace and security, uh, very similar to Malaysia, by the way. And uh, another, another pillar is um, uh, our, um, our commitment to the uh, Western community of values. Uh, first of all, of course, the European Union. We, uh, uh, we are anchored in, in the European Union. We work for coherence and further integration of the European Union. The European Union uh, gives us lead also for our foreign policy. Um, and uh, uh, to, together with our European partners, we want uh, to continue uh, on this uh, path. And uh, we have the uh, transatlantic partnership um, with uh, the United States of America and uh, with, with uh, Canada uh, and uh, embodied by uh, the, the um, uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Uh, so, so this is uh, the setup of um, our uh, foreign policy. And um, if it comes to Asia, I can, um, uh, I can point out that last year, uh, our government has issued its uh, policy guidelines on the Indo-Pacific. This is quite interesting uh, reading, I believe, uh, and this has been broadly supported by also all, all these uh, four political forces. So this will okay. be uh, uh, certainly continued, I, uh, I can say, and uh, it reflects much of what I just said. These uh, these guidelines they um, they contain seven chapters, uh, as I said: uh, peace and security, uh, multilateralism, uh, rule of law, democracy, human rights. Um, but also uh, environment, a very um, prominent uh, topic uh, in, in, this, uh, in our time. Um, uh, trade and investment, uh, digitization and connectivity, uh, and uh, also um, education, science, culture. So, so uh, uh, the, the intention is, um, which is reflected in these guidelines, to, um, to deepen, but also to broaden our relations to this region, which we um, believed to be crucial uh, for the uh, further global uh, development and uh, to, um, uh, to enhance our partnership. And uh, personally, I must say, uh, this, uh, this is my job with Malaysia. And I'm yes. very happy and looking forward to, to implementing that. Now, also one of the things, uh, uh, Your Excellency, I want to ask you about where we are at in terms of the promotion of cultural education and social understanding. Obviously, we have the Goethe Institute, which has been around for a long time in Malaysia. We also have, from an educational perspective, I think several hundred Malaysians who are uh, studying in German universities like that. Could you care to give us some insights in, in the cultural, social and educational space? Yes, uh, this is very dear to us. 
uh, uh, until uh, the pandemic uh, bef befell us all, um, we had a very um, intensive exchange. Uh, we had many artists coming to Malaysia, invited by the Goethe Institute, also invited by the embassy. Um, and uh, we, uh, we had uh, musicians and uh, 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 so, so on all fields of arts, uh, there, there was this um, this uh, interchange, um, and uh, uh, we have uh, in in the country operating Goethe Institute, as you said, they give language courses. Uh, now they have been operating even during the uh, pandemic. Uh, they have switched uh, to online courses, uh, which have um, found uh, many followers. Uh, then we also have the DRAD in uh, in um, Malaysia. This is the German academic exchange service and um, they uh, provide advice uh, to students uh, how to get to Germany and how to study in Germany. And um, I, I can proudly say that it's not just a few hundred but uh, 1,500 or even more, 1,600 uh, uh, students uh, from Malaysia studying in, in Germany and uh, it will be maybe interesting for your audience uh, to know uh, that we have also quite a few courses in English in, in uh, Germany. So uh, it's not necessary everywhere to, uh, to uh, speak German. However, I can only advise you to, um, to learn German. If you have kids, then make them uh, learn German in school at the Goethe Institute, uh, because there's a great advantage um, which Germany has compared to uh, other nations. Um, you can study in Germany for free. We have very good um, educational institutions, universities, uh, and, and um, it, most of them are um, uh, accessible uh, for free. So, so you just need your um, a certificate that you are fluent in, in German, and of course uh, uh, your, um, uh, your diplomas, uh, but then you can study there. So it's worthwhile learning German. And you know, uh, that's increasingly become a popular uh, topic of conversation uh, among middle class Malaysians who find that you know tr the traditional uh, educational uh, venues like uh, Australia and the US and uh, the UK are so expensive and they're looking for more high quality and uh, more affordable options and obviously Germany is a very good option, especially in technical education. I couldn't agree more. Now, Your Excellency, final question. What would you like to leave us with before we end this excellent conversation? Well, uh, I, would, uh, I would wish everybody here to stay healthy and uh, be cautious, not, not to get uh, infected, even if you're vaccinated, I'm vaccinated, uh, to, to uh, stay well away from uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, virus. And um, uh, this is, I think, uh, the, the most important wish uh, we should have uh, for each other in these uh, difficult times. Dr. Sinsi, thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, I'm Brian Fernandez, and I've been speaking to the German ambassador to Malaysia, His Excellency Dr. Peter Blomeyer, on Biztex Ambassador Conversation Show. This will, video will be on our Facebook and LinkedIn sites, as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thanks a lot for tuning in.